I'm Christopher Gregg, an historian at the University of Windsor, Faculty of Education, Women and Gender Studies. Uh, the study um, was looking at uh, Ontario boys in the post-war period 1945 to 1960. I was looking at the production uh, of an ideal boyhood and what that may have meant for uh, some boys in determining and shaping uh, their lives. The research question um, was loosely how did one particular form of boyhood over other forms of boyhood uh, become prevalent, become dominant uh, in a way that occupied um, public and, and academic space? Uh, what prompted my interest, in, my interest in that research was um, roughly around the late 1980s, early 1990s here in Ontario and other uh, jurisdictions across the Western world, there was an intensification uh, of concern around boys and boyhood. And popular commentators, uh, policymakers, uh, teachers, and others were uh, concerned that boys weren't doing well compared to girls. So partly that meant academic achievement, uh, partly that was around social ills. Uh, so the, this intensification of, of boys during that period led me to ask the question, you know, has this happened before? Was there another historical period where there was this intense intensification around boys and boyhood? And the 19, the post-war period was uh, a moment in time where there were parallel concerns from, uh, from today. Uh, does reflexivity matter uh, to an historian? The simple answer is yes, it does. Um, reflexivity, the sort of ongoing, uh, consistent dialogue and scrutinization of your own assumptions, beliefs, conceptualization um, you know, of the world is part of the research process. Um, it isn't just something that happens in a one-off. It's sort of part and parcel what you bring to um, the interpretation of the data on, a, on an ongoing basis. Thinking about um, your class position, for example, or the, uh, the gender construction of your own identity and how that uh, plays out in your interpretation uh, in working with um, uh, the, the data is significant because in part it will shape um, your conclusions that you come to. So you have to be attentive, uh, you have to be conscious and aware of the kind of baggage uh, that, you, that you bring uh, to the research. I use a conceptual framework, a constructivist model, um, which brings with it assumptions, beliefs, and understandings about the world, and particularly as it relates um, you know, to gender. So that's uh, you know, the, the short description of my conceptual model. Oftentimes, students may confuse a theoretical model uh, or theoretical framework with a conceptual model. So my understanding and how I think about it is I think about a conceptual model broadly, which is a constructivist model. But inside that um, conceptual framework, I use theoretical frameworks, and here I draw from a critical pro-feminist, feminist, feminist uh, theoretical framework that helps me interpret uh, and analyze the data. Um, so a constructivist model, um, a belief that exists with that model is that gender is constructed, uh, which aligns with um, you know, a feminist framework which understands the world largely as patriarchal uh, in that systems of oppression, gender being one, race being one, social class and so forth, uh, function in a way that uh, produce particular kinds of identities um, and pathologize and marginalize other forms of identity. And so when looking at the post-war period, um, the pro-feminist feminist framework was helpful uh, because it helped me to understand how uh, gender relations were being worked out uh, within the popular uh, imagination, um, popular press, in a way that uh, privileged one form of boyhood uh, over other forms of boyhood. 
The text that I chose and the reasons why um, were driven large part because I was interested in looking at what, how did the majority of the population in Ontario, where did their beliefs come from? Uh, how did their understandings about the world, um, where did they get them from? So we know from research that um, newspapers were a key source of shaping people's beliefs about the post-war world. And so if I wanted to understand uh, how likely most people understood boyhood, newspapers were um, the first place that I wanted to go. And so I looked at uh, national newspapers, but I also looked at local newspapers uh, like the London Free Press and, and other um, other texts like that to get a sense of how they were uh, positioning, how they were constructing uh, boyhood. 